morning and welcome on this 15th Sunday after Pentecost and also grandparents day so congratulations to all of you who are grandpas and grandmas that's all of us we're going to follow uh, the order of worship uh, service one on page 151 I've got a few announcements here that I wanted to share a uh, left frying is going to start up again and so the first uh, dates for that will be October 6th and the 13th. Those are the first two Tuesdays in October at 9 in the morning. So if you'd like to be involved in Lefts of Frying, uh, the, um, the bazaar is going to be sort of streamlined this year because of COVID, uh, but we're not giving up the Lefts of part of it. So just wanted you to know that. Uh, also, tomorrow the elders meet in the morning, and then on Tuesday the council meets in the morning. And uh, Wednesday morning we continue with our adult uh, study. May the Lord bless our worship and communion. And once again, our communion is a self-serve uh, kind of uh, model uh, where you uh, and your uh, partner uh, or you yourself come forward uh, to receive the uh, the elements. So may the Lord bless our time together.
please rise as we follow Divine Service 1, page 151, and we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most, Most merciful God, God we confess, confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his great mercy, has given his only begotten Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of the word, and by the authority of Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we speak the words of the Kyrie. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King, Almighty God, God and Father, Father, we worship you, we, we give you thanks, we praise, we praise you for your glory. glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. You have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now the Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. O God, our refuge and strength, the author of all godliness, hear the devout prayers of your church, especially in times of persecution, and grant that what we ask in faith we may obtain. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated now for the hearing of the word. Notice that there's a responsive psalm following the first reading. The Old Testament lesson is recorded in the 50th chapter of the book of Genesis. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us, and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him, his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, 
For am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. And now we pray responsibly from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life and death, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are opposed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he is from us. The epistle reading for this day is recorded in the 14th chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans beginning at verse 1. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who, who abstains, and let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be both Lord, he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God so that each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Alleluia and the Gospel. Alleluia, if you You forgive forgive others their their trespasses, trespasses, your your heavenly heavenly Father Father will also forgive you. you. Alleluia. The Gospel for today is from the 18th chapter of Matthew. And it will serve as our text for the message today. And we read in the name of our Savior and Lord. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. 
And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. pray. 
O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Amen. Amen. O grace and mercy and peace be unto all of you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear redeemed in Christ. So how many of you deal with ultimatums? Maybe your spouse gave you an ultimatum, right? Or maybe your employer has given you an ultimatum. Or maybe you as an employer have given your employee an ultimatum. And for sure, if you've raised children, and have grandchildren, you probably have given out some ultimatums as a parent along the way. And so we've come to know the proverbial three strikes and you're out, right? Or that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Well, Peter uh, kind of deals with ultimatum as well. He comes to Jesus with a question. How many times should I forgive my brother when he sins against me? How many times? Well, Peter thought that he was being generous or at least uh, being conventional uh, when he gave the number seven. Should I forgive him up to seven times? Sounds like a good number, a good Bible number, right? God created the world in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. Has that idea of completeness, right? But the Lord said to him, the Lord Jesus, he said, Peter, not seven times, but I say to you, 70 times seven. Some translations have 77 uh, the translation you heard read said 70 times 7. However you do the math on either of those numbers, you realize Jesus' point that your willingness to forgive should be unlimited. Unlimited. And so this isn't just a matter of the mind. You know how well you can do the math but rather uh, it is a matter of the heart and that's what Jesus is getting at for Peter and for you and I as well yes Peter thought that he could give an ultimatum seven times well I think it's helpful for us to look at the psalm that we you know, reflected on today, Psalm 103, where it says, as far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed your transgressions from you. As far as the east is from the west. And then, as high as is the heavens, as far as, as, far as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love toward those who fear him. Think about that. The Bible isn't exaggerating there. The Bible is telling us something about God and his mercy and his forgiveness. God is much bigger in that department than we ever would be or could be. Think about that for a moment. But then think about the Old Testament lesson too. The Old Testament lesson about Joseph and his brothers. We didn't get the whole story in that brief reading from Genesis 50, but you remember, you remember what happened. Joseph was mistreated by his brothers, so much so that they sold him into slavery, and he ended up in Egypt. And as a young man, Joseph went through many challenges, personal challenges. But God had raised him up and put him in a special position. 
second to Pharaoh, so that he could prepare the world for a famine. And with his wisdom and his ability, and with God's direction, he was able to store up food so that they had plenty during the time of famine. And Joseph met up with his brothers down the road because they came to Egypt to find food, lest they starve. And so Joseph had that opportunity to take vengeance on his brothers who had so mistreated him. But Joseph is a Christ-like figure way before Jesus came into the world in that he showed mercy. He forgave his brothers. And that was a beautiful and wonderful thing. You know, as a church body, we have the word mercy as one of our three points about who we are and what we do. So it's mercy, it's witness, and it's life together. That describes what the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod does as a church body. And mercy is is part of it. I gave you the theme, Kyrie eleison. I'm not speaking your language, I'm speaking the Greek language there. Kyrie means Lord, and eleison means have mercy. Lord, have mercy. It's part of our liturgy. You know, in other services, it's simply Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. The one we did today was a little more extended, but it always had that response of have mercy. And so we go to the gospel, we go to the teaching that Jesus gives in order to illustrate the power and the beauty of forgiveness and showing mercy. And so he uses a king a master who has servants. And one of the servants owed him millions of dollars. And see, the king wanted to collect on the debts. And so this servant was unable to pay. He got down on his knees and he begged. He begged because this king had threatened that he would sell him, his wife, his family, and all that he had to repay the debt. And so he begged for mercy. And the king found it in himself to cancel all of his debt. You're free to go. And by the way, the word forgiveness in Greek means to be set free. You know, we pray, forgive us our debts, right? That's one of the translations for the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our debts. Set us free. And that's what the king did. He showed mercy. Now that could be a story in and of itself, right? But we've got part two. We've got scene two. And it's so important that we remember scene two because Jesus is teaching us about the full picture of what it means to to forgive and to be forgiven, to show mercy and to receive mercy. Blessed are the merciful, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this servant who had been forgiven, he goes, he finds a fellow servant who owes him some money, but the amount of money is maybe a hundred days of salary compared to millions of dollars. He demands from the servant that he pay up. But in like manner, this servant, he begs, you know, be patient with me. Be patient, I will repay. But no, that wasn't good enough. 
This servant who had been forgiven, who had been shown mercy, does not find it in himself to give out mercy. And so he has this man thrown into jail until all the debt is paid. And so when the other servants saw that, they were greatly distressed, and they went and told the king what had happened. And so the king brought this servant in and said, Hey, I showed you great mercy by forgiving you your debt, and you couldn't find it in you to show mercy to this other servant. And so he changed his conditions, and he said, You're going to be in jail until you pay every last penny. But then see, Jesus goes on to say, so it will be with your heavenly Father. If you don't forgive your brother from your heart, you won't be forgiven. You're going to have to pay dearly. Now that's a, a very severe law statement, isn't it? But the Lord Jesus is showing us the seriousness. And he wants to lead us to be merciful. But really, we can't really be talked into that or forced into it. Simply, we can be told that Christ has shown us mercy. God has shown each of us mercy. He has forgiven us. He has set us free. Did you know that mercy and grace often go together? But there is a difference. Mercy is when you don't get when you don't get what's coming to you, right? Like punishment. Grace is when you receive that which you don't deserve. But really kind of two sides of the same coin. God's mercy and grace. We have received God's mercy in Christ Jesus. According to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. That having been justified by faith, you know, we have peace with God and we are heirs of that eternal treasure. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison. You know, I was at a conference with a lot of pastors once, and uh, we were at a round table, small discussions, and one of the pastors who had been a missionary related this story, this true story about his own life. Uh, he and his family had served in a kind of primitive village, in a faraway place. And his daughter had been sexually and physically assaulted by one of the uh, native uh, young men there. And the way that they did things in that village, in that tribe, is that the one who has been uh, offended has the right to mete out repayment for what was done. And so the, the leader of that tribe handed this missionary a gun and said, you can shoot this guy for what he did to your daughter. This pastor remembers holding that gun and just, you know, reflecting on all that had happened. And he had that opportunity to bring about justice for his family. But he said, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. I mean, what, what would be the lesson for these people that I've spent years teaching about God's forgiveness and his mercy? And so... That was a pretty profound and compelling statement and lesson that he shared with each of us. But you know what? We've been shown mercy. 
by God. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. It goes together, doesn't it? As God has forgiven us, we are to forgive one another. Kyrie eleison. May you be known for showing mercy. May you show yourselves to be children of God. And if you remember that story about the Good Samaritan, that parable that Jesus told, at the end of the story, he asked the question, who proved to be a neighbor to the one who was injured? And the answer was, the one who showed him mercy. Right? The one who showed him mercy. Not the priest and the Levite who passed by on the other side, but the one who stopped and bound up the wounds and took this man to safety and even paid for his convalescence. The one who showed mercy. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever, world without end. Amen. And may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we join in prayer. Uh, we remember uh, our brother, a uh, pastor down in Staples, uh, Pastor Collins, Robin Collins, uh, who is recovering from stroke. And also we remember uh, those on our prayer list. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, as once you kept Joseph from evil and brought good from his suffering in Egypt, deliver us by your grace so that we may learn patience in trials. Teach us to be slow to judge, quick to forgive, and steadfast in love for you and for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Lord, you have shown great compassion to us. Teach us to show such compassion to others, that we may welcome the stranger, love our neighbor in need, and be attentive to those new to the faith or vulnerable to temptation. Help us to serve the refugees seeking safety and give us opportunity to share your gifts with those who live in poverty and want. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. O oh, gracious God, bless those who preach and teach your word, and give the hearers willing ears to hear and willing hearts to learn the scriptures well. Bless those now training to be pastors and church workers. Grant to all the baptized the aid of your Holy Spirit, so that receiving your gospel with joy, we may share it freely with those outside the household of faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, give wisdom and courage to our elected and appointed leaders, that they may pursue justice, seek peace, and protect life from its natural beginning to its natural end. Bring an end to the threats of terror and violence among the peoples, and open all nations to the voice of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Lord, lead us to pursue reconciliation, that we may stand before you forgiven and united in faith. Give us unity of doctrine and help us to walk together in harmony of life. Prepare us to receive your own Son's body and blood with faith and bring to fruition in our lives the precious gift of grace we receive in this communion. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O blessed Father, you know our weakness of body and soul. Give to the troubled in mind your peace, to the suffering relief, to the sick healing, to the grieving comfort, and deliver the dying into everlasting life. Hear us especially for our brother, Pastor Collins, and also those that we name in our hearts and those on our prayer list. Yes, Lord, in your mercy, uh, bring them healing and bring them confidence and encouragement. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. O giving Lord, all good things come from you. Open our hearts to be generous with the poor and to bring you the tithes and offerings you are due, that your church and all her agencies may serve your gracious purpose and suffer no lack of people or resources to do the work of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, deliver us from temptation and the powers of evil, that we may be faithful unto death and receive from your hand the crown of everlasting life. Whether we live or die, we belong to you. And we pray you to comfort us with this promise, that we may join the company of the saints on the day you have appointed, and enter into the heavenly places to worship at your throne on high. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we join, or as I sing, we give a prayer.
I ask you to rise and we join in speaking the words of the offertory on page 159. What shall, shall I, I render, render to the Lord, Lord for all his benefits to me? To me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. We continue with the service of communion with the preface, the Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we lift them to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right to give him thanks and praise it is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Together we speak the words of the August day. Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. You may be seated as you prepare for distribution.